Ah, there we go. Good evening. I want to call to order the meeting of the Powhatan County Planning Commission. Today is Tuesday, February 7th, 2023. Note the record that one member is not present, Dr. Barbara Brown tonight. In addition to participating in person, members of the public may participate remotely by electronic means by joining uh, the webinar using Zoom. Uh, during the public comment period, participants joining on Zoom may raise their hand using the Zoom controls on the computer screen or by dialing in by pressing star nine on your phone. Tonight, Mr. Bobby Hall will lead us in our invocation. Okay. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance and direction in our collective efforts to be good stewards of the public trust, make fair and wise decisions, and to keep Powhatan a wonderful place to live and work. Amen. Amen. Okay, next on our agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Are there any requests to postpone action or amend the agenda tonight? Okay, do I have a motion to accept the agenda as written? Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tonight is an organizational meeting and the first order of business is the election of the chair for the next year. I move Dr. Brown is not with us tonight, but I make the motion that Dr. Barbara Brown will be the chair next year. Do I have a second? A second. Roll call vote. Aye. Do you wanna call, who's calling? Oh, you just looked at me. Sorry. I know I was, what? Um, Mr. Latry, does someone have to call the roll or can I? All in favor. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The next up is election of the vice chair. I'd like to nominate uh, Ms. Vicki Hurt as vice chair. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Since Dr. Brown is not present tonight, I will continue running the meeting. All right. We will adopt. Uh, Robert's rule of order are there I asked everyone to look over that before the meeting tonight were there any questions or concerns regarding that okay if not also in the agenda tonight was the adoption of the meeting schedule there are two meetings that deviate from our usual Tuesday night 4th of July and election night uh uh, Mr. Latching, do I have to make a motion to accept those meetings? Yeah, you need to adopt rules of order uh, and, and make and, the, the and do both. You right. can do both in one motion. Though. That's what I was yeah. shooting for. Okay, so do I have a motion to accept the rules of order and the meeting schedule? I'll make a motion to accept them. Do I have a second? Second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, moving on this evening to administrative items. I do apologize to the public that we did not have a January meeting uh, for some technical difficulties, but we are ready to roll tonight. And the first thing we need to do is to approve the minutes of the meeting from December 6, our regular meeting. And let's begin those minutes in our packet, begin on page 11. Ms. Pendergrass, do you have any corrections? I am fine, thank you. Ms. Bolin, do you have any corrections? Mr. Hall, mm -hmm. I have corrections that Dr. Brown has called in to me, so I will, <laughs> I will point those out. So I don't know who is fixing the, okay, great. Okay, if you don't mind looking on page 12, um, Dr. Brown had a question that typically in public comment, did we list the speaker's addresses? So a lot of those folks did not have their addresses in there. So I didn't know if that was a problem. It's not a problem, Mr. Latchney. Well, it's not required by law. It's, it's hard, not, it's okay. If it's not required by law, we're not gonna lose sleep over it. Also on page 12, uh, Mannequin Ferry Road, it was spelled mannequin, like what you see in a clothing store and not the way we spell mannequin. <laughs> we might wanna correct that. Also on page 12, by Ms. Fleming's comment, Boyer Road, I believe Boyer is spelled B-O-Y-E-R. Not a huge deal, but we like to keep our records um, as accurate as possible. And then um, on page, am I going too quick? Okay, page 15, again, when Ms. Fleming spoke, when Mr. Anderson stated, 
Dr. Brown and I, maybe the rest of the commission can tell, we can't remember who Mr. Anderson was that spoke there. We were wondering if that was not the correct name of the person who spoke. That was not the applicant's name. So we might need to check into that. Mr. Latchney, if we're uncertain about that one name, can we go on and- Yeah, just adopt and with the instruction to staff to check the audio That's, and correct the name. Thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to accept the minutes with the amended and corrections as noted? Motion to accept the minutes with the amendments. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Awesome. Okay, next is our public comment period, ladies and gentlemen. This is now open. If you'd like to comment on planning related matters that are not scheduled for a public hearing later this evening, please come forward and you're limited to three minutes. Please state your name and address and then we'll check with folks that are zooming in or calling in. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak about a planning issue that's not covered tonight in a conditional use permit or heard tonight? Seeing no one present, is there anyone at home? Okay, I then will close the public comment period and we will move on. There's no old business tonight. We have public hearings. Our first public hearing is Niles Good, District 1, 22-08, a conditional use permit. And I guess you're gonna preview for us. Yes, great. Hello, uh, Jonas Sepper, uh, Planner One. So um, this is 22-08-CUP. Uh, uh, this is for Niles Good. Um, or good. Uh, he has requested a conditional use permit uh, to allow for a accessory home-based truck hauler business uh, use out of the um, Agricultural 10 uh, Zoning District. Um, it's his property, it's located about a um, quarter of a mile or a half a mile down the, the road, down Hancock Road. Um, future land use is rural areas. Um, the, there is some discrepancy about whether he's encroaching on to the neighboring property with his use. Um, staff has recommended denial uh, because of uh, the concerns of the citizens, as well as uh, the nature of the use would not fall in line with the intent of the code or the future land use of the property. Okay, uh, is the applicant, applicant here this evening would like to add anything to the presentation? I do not see it. Okay, I just want it to be fair. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we will open if there's no further there, we'll open to public comment period. Anyone wishing to comment on this specific request, please come forward and comment now. Please state your name and address. And as I said, you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, my name is Melody Hackett. My address is 2265 Darley Drive. And I wanna ask a quick question. Can I give y'all a set of the pictures that I brought or is that not necessary? I'm totally fine with seeing a set of pictures. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me just hand them up. So I live on Darley Road, which is right past, it's right before their property on Hancock. I get run off the road by their trucks at least once a month. I've lived there five years. Also, number one is the damage they do to our roads. That's the number one picture. They also do a lot of burning beside my property. Their property butts up to my property. This is what they do. Number, I'm just a little nervous, I'm sorry. Hey, we're, we're friendly, it's okay. Um, number three shows all of the area that they're disturbing with no silt fence. That area they're disturbing is not on their property. That is on 2005 Hancock Road. Number four shows how high that dirt pile is, four to six feet. This one shows 
where their silt runs into my pond. Actually, it's a lake where it runs into our lake because there's a finger that follows their property. Well, actually it's not theirs to our lake in the front yard of our house. And number six is the same thing as well. And number seven shows a picture of our lake. So I guess my thing is I have a 17 year old son that has a learner's permit. He would not be able to handle a truck that big running him off the road. Also, we're in a residential community where they're ruining our roads. Also, my house always smells like smoke. I really didn't know why at first, now I do. And also our pond is getting filled by their silt, which is another problem. And that's all I have. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward and speak this evening regarding the CUP? Yes, sir. I know. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I'm Bill Farrow. I'm at uh, 2255 Darley Drive, also on that lake. Um, I noticed that there was a, uh, a map that showed the contributory down to the, our lake. And it runs straight down from their property and the property that they're, they're stacking. Um, Melody showed the dirt pile that was four to six feet higher than the saplings that were around there. Um, that didn't used to be that way. It was kind of a, a ravine in there. So it's been filled in. And the, the fires that they've been burning in there along with the black smoke that's coming up and that's not wood that's uh, sending up black smoke, but all the char and the ash and the nutrients, that's what's washing down along with the runoff from clay and whatnot. That's charging our lake. We had one of the worst algae blooms ever. We've had to, to purchase chemicals to treat it this year. And that's the first time in the last eight years since I've been there. So, you know, we definitely had issues with that along with the traffic issues. Yes, sir, thank you. Yes, ma'am, welcome. Thank you. AUKSE, A-U-K-S-E, WIRZ, W-I-R-Z, 2275 Darley Drive. Um, I just wanted to echo Bill and Melody's comments about the safety issues on, on Hancock Road. There's not enough room to pass your trucks. They drift into the curves on that road. And multiple times I've had to stand on my brakes to stop. Otherwise, there was gonna be a head-on collision. And I try to avoid driving during times and I know that those trucks are on the road. Um, the smoke issues, the runoff bill is already addressed and it's just not an appropriate location for that kind of a business. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Mike Perdue, 1832 Hancock Road. Um, I'll echo the earlier comments regarding safety and the nuisance of the site, but um, particularly just given the code section here, even with the conditional use permit, he would still not be in compliance. Um, there are approximately seven dump trucks on the property on a regular basis, several excavators, track loaders. Um, it's a pretty big operation. His website says he has three million in operating equipment. Um, there are suitable locations within the county that he could operate this business. Um, he has alternatives um, and certainly operating it out of a more suitable location would be better for, for our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else present tonight that would like to come forward and speak? Hi, I'm Susie Warsham. I live on 1805 Hancock Road. I've lived there over 40 years and I walked that road. That's a lot walk that road every day and it's just too dangerous to be walking with all those trucks on the road. Um, there's a lot of heavy foot traffic on that on that road. We've got lots of children, families, people walking the dogs and they've done it for years and years and years. People are jogging and now we have to watch out for these trucks who have no regard for us on the road walking and it's just it's very dangerous. A lot of times when we're coming home on Hancock Road, the trucks are trying to back up into Mr. Good's driveway with um, trailers and heavy equipment and they run off the road and the whole road is blocked. 
So you have to sit there for an hour or longer. If you have kids, you know, or babies, sometimes I have my granddaughter with my one-year-old granddaughter with me, I've had her, and we're stuck there. I mean, we can't get home until they get the trucks removed and the equipment removed. Um, it presents a true hazard or, or um, I may not say this right, but it's if there was an emergency, the road is blocked. Nobody can get in or out at all. Um, a lot of times when you're, like even last week, when you're coming home, the trucks go to the end of, air, to the, end of the road where we live and they turn around and they have private driveways all the time with no regard of you know, disturbing the land or, or the damage that they're doing to our driveways. In addition to that, when they do turn around, they come back up around the road and they park on the wrong, on the wrong side of the road right at a very extremely dangerous curve. And then that, and you can't see if you're going home with the, the truck and the trailer and the equipment on there, what's coming around that curve and you have to pass it and take your life in your own hands because you can't see what's coming. So I just feel like this, you know, it's a danger to everybody who lives there. We're just waiting for an accident or a tragedy. I hope that never happens, but I do not believe that his business needs to be in a res residential area um, especially on Hancock Road when the road is so small, so narrow, and it's cur curvy and windy the whole time. It's just not an appropriate place for his business with all the families and kids and, and everybody using that road with all walking and exercising and everything. So I have no, business, no, no objection to him having his business, but I believe that Hancock Road is not the appropriate place for it. Um, and I also feel that with the business being there, that it would impact air property value too. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there anyone on? Oh, we have some more. Hang on. We won't go to online yet. Uh, my name is Bill Sizemore. My address is 2430 Gobbler Ridge Road. Uh, I'll echo what everyone else has uh, so nicely put. Uh, just to add to it, uh, my wife walks uh, often with a little dog. And from time to time, uh, I will ride my bicycle, you know, which from my house, I can put in three miles going up to uh, to the far end of the road, going all the way down to the dead end road, and then coming back to the house. Some 25 or so years ago, we had a similar situation where some, someone, in this case, it was someone outside of the county who wanted to come in and turn a piece of property into a mass business operation, building homes, uh, small homes on a large scale. Um, we addressed that then, and uh, with the wisdom of this uh, group, uh, we they chose to uh, back it off on scale. And the idea was from Jude's Ferry back to where I am, where you go from a quarter acre, I think it's a quarter acre, it might be less or more, back to our area where we have 10 acres, and behind me is the Hancock Farm, which with massive acreage. And the decision then was to progressively move back in a residential area and keep it residential. So if you fast forward to now, there's, there was another group, that uh, another individual that bought some property uh, out of foreclosure and tried to turn it quickly and re subdivide it that went against the plans from 20 some years ago. And now you have this, uh, you know, I'll echo what everybody else has said, the safety issues, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you stick with the policy that was set a good number of years ago, this is clearly not appropriate for what was established and sets a precedent um, on a couple of different occasions. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 
Speak my name up is, to the mic. Yes. Hi. My name is John Wallace. I live at 1820 Hancock Road. Some of my neighbors are here. We live at the very end of Hancock Road and we're three quarters of a mile in the woods. So we don't see all the stuff that's happening as it happens, but we do see what's happened after the fact. The back of the trailers in with the dump trucks, back off the main road into the field, putting tire marks into the driveways, into the sides of the driveways, into the ditches. We've seen that. We have also been stuck, as my neighbor said, waiting for him to turn around at Gobble Ridge in his driveway. And we've been stuck there five, sometimes six, seven minutes, waiting for him to turn around to get back into his driveway. Very, very dangerous. We had been run off the road one time. We basically were going 15 miles an hour. His truck come around the curve. And if we had been going the speed limit, we would have had a head on collision. We ended up running into a mailbox just to get out of the way. So all the things that people have said here tonight, I'm 100% behind them because we've seen it. Um, it doesn't affect us immediately as far as where we are located, but we have to go through it every day. So everything that everybody else has said here about it, we have experienced the same thing. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else present like to come forward, please? Good evening. I'm Terry Wagner, 1901 Hancock Road. And I've got mostly a couple of questions more than anything else. According to my understanding, uh, the proposal is applicable, applicable only to his two acres. Is that correct? Unfortunately, we are here to listen to you. Okay. We cannot answer questions. Fine. I'm that's, that's sorry. Fine. In that case, if you refer to page 20 of the agenda, there's a picture of his uh, property bounds. And if you'll notice, there is a obvious area off the property where there's been significant earthwork. Uh, my concern was if you issue a conditional use permit for the two acres, that all the activity remain on the two acres so that you're not authorizing activity off of the acreage that he's applied for. It was a little puzzling to me when I, and you know, I'm, I know very little about local zoning, planning and land use, but it was puzzling to me that you have an application for a, permit that only allows one vehicle when I can drive by from the road. And you know, the last thing I want to do is be a bad neighbor. But when I can drive by on a state highway and see five to six trucks any afternoon. When I came up here today, there were five trucks parked. I met another truck coming in. So that's six trucks. Why would you apply for a permit knowing that you only could operate one truck if you're operating six trucks. Uh, on page 23, VDOT made a couple of uh, recommendations. And in the proposal, Mr. Good provided a handwritten, hand-drawn site plan. And VDOT's proposal VDOT required a land use permit prior, I'm sorry, that's wrong. Prior, a site plan prior to any land disturbance and a land use permit required for any work in the right of way. The new entrance that's, well, the entrance that's shown as a new entrance in your agenda was installed on January 27th. So I must assume that he already has a site plan to VDOT and he obtained a permit for the work that he had to do in the right of way to install the culvert. Uh, that's really all the comments I have. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. 
Anyone else, please come forward. Well, I've been quiet a really long time now, y'all. Christy Elliott, 3471 Anderson Highway. So why would I be involved in this? Imagine that that's a worship and I'm a worship. Here we go. So all I'm going to say is I've seen this place. Have y'all seen it? I think that should say it all right there. If you've seen where it is, the, um, as Susan spoke, their road is private property. It's a private road maintained by them where nobody but the family should be going down that road. So um, just here to give my family a little support and give the old Powhatan people a little support who have a beautiful farm at the very end of the road. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else tonight present, please come forward. Hello, I'm Carlisle Bowling at 2425 Gobbler Ridge Road. Um, and I echo everything that's been said, but also back in that property, there's like a 60 foot covered structure that somebody's built back past his property. There's tanks back there. There's been earth moved all around. I feel like this, his operation is not just a trucking business. I think he's going to be bringing stuff in. I think he's got bigger plans. So I think this trucking business is connected to another project as well. So I think you guys or somebody needs to go back there and really take a look at what's going on. I mean, we're talking acres and acres back there. They're cleared, flattened out. There's backhoes back there. There's a big a covered structure back there, like maybe 60 feet long, um, open like it's a sawmill or something. Um, so maybe that's his plan is to maybe grind stumps, sawmill, you know, there's, um, there might be stuff coming in there instead of just trucks going out. You know, do you understand what I'm saying? And that's my concern is that this is not, this is just kind of a ploy to get started and then it's going to turn into something a whole lot bigger than just a trucking business. So um, that's that's my really big concern is this is gonna be a big operation that's gonna to have to do with more than just trucking. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else present, please come forward. Anyone on Zoom or the phone? Okay, at this point, I will close the public comment period and we will do the planning commission uh, questions and discussions. Who would like to start lead off? I will. Thank you. Okay. So I'm very familiar with Hancock Road. I know Keith Kerr that lives at the end of Hancock Road. He has cows and everything. I've known other people that live down Hancock Road. I have three issues that jump out at me. First and foremost, the last gentleman that spoke, he may be correct because I'm looking at a two acre parcel and I'm seeing and hearing all of these trucks, how are they fitting on two acres? It doesn't, it just blows my mind. It just doesn't seem that it would work there. The road itself, Hancock Road, is a narrow road and it is mainly residential. And I, you know, I've been there several times and I see people walking just like you say. And I, I feel for you, I don't think that the road, this road is the right place for this business. Then the, I, I, I believe you made a comment about the um, silt and everything going down. You can see on this map, you can see there's a pine forest and you can see must be a creek where they couldn't, were not allowed to cut the hardwood trees. So it's got to be a creek and it leads, it clearly shows right from that parcel. And we have two ponds in our farm. And I know I get very aggravated if anything goes on anywhere what's filling up air pond with silt from somebody else's property. That's a big no-no to me. So I, I, I don't see any advantages, any pluses for this project, in my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Bowling. Mr. Hall? I'll continue with this, go right around the, we'll do the, it. the table. Um, 
I rode by there. It's been some time since I've been down uh, uh, Hancock and Gobble Ridge. Um, I was kind of shocked at when I saw the property. Uh, I counted uh, six dump trucks, and there's a a mess of I'll just say a mess of uh, heavy equipment there. Some of it's operational. Some of it looks like it's just sitting on the side and for a burial site almost. Let's say. But um, yeah, the biggest thing is that he's already, even if the CUP was passed for, for one dump truck, he's way over that limit. I don't see that uh, how he's going to operate his business and just with one dump truck, but you know, where the other six or seven trucks going to go, let alone all the heavy equipment. You can also tell uh, looking at the property lines that a lot of the work that is going on on that site is not on on that two acre that's being uh, that's being applied for so uh, that's a concern otherwise for another another day maybe but anyway uh, but as far as this uh, uh, I would have to say that uh, that um that my vote's going to be uh, is going to be a no. I will go ahead and say that right now. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Ms. Pendergrass? Um, just the same thing. I, I really just cannot support a CUP that is going to violate the zoning codes. And um, we're clearly at that point. And um, there's areas in the county that will support that business. And this business, is, to me, the intensity and the visual of it it needs to be in a place that supports it and that would be in compliance with the zoning code. And I totally agree with you. I'm obviously a huge supporter of business in Powhatan County, but in the appropriate location. And when I rode down there, I have to be honest, I was very taken back that what it looked like and on two acres. And I just, <clears throat> I have to be honest and I'm ready to make a motion if I may, because it's in my district. If there's no further discussion on this matter, ladies and gentlemen, in accordance with section 83-123F4 of the Powhatan County Zoning Ordinance and Public Necessity, Convenience, General Welfare and Good Zoning Practice, the Planning Commission recommends denial of the request submitted by Niles Good to permit a home-based truck hauler business on tax map parcel 30-14F. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. Uh, roll call vote. Aye. 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 So motion to deny passes 4-0. Okay, moving on to our second 22-10 CUP. Uh, District 2, Mr. Morset, do we, who's presenting that tonight or is the applicant taking care of that? There we go. All right, so this is Mr. Morissette's application for a conditional use permit to permit an asphalt or concrete plant within the Agricultural 10, A10 zoning district. Um, as you can see, this is gonna be over three different parcels and uh, approximately 6.7 acres. So this is a, a vicinity map. Um, the parcel is just north of the intersection of Dorset and Genito. The current zoning has this as A10 agricultural. Um, right below it, we can see there's some commercial areas and then a little bit further down, some single family residential. Our future land use map has this area as rural areas, as most of Powhatan is. So I just wanted to have a quick definition here of what an asphalt or concrete plant is, and then um, tell you why I think that Mr. Morissette's um, 
business is falls into this category, but also is a lighter use of this category. So we have asphalt and concrete plant is an industrial facility that obviously creates concrete or asphalt concrete products. <clears throat> um, what makes Mr. Morissette's business just a little different is he is not actually creating any asphalt on the on the parcel. He has these very um, high tech trucks that have the individual materials loaded onto the truck. The truck leaves, goes to the job site, mixes the concrete there. Um, I've been told it reduces a lot of um, excess concrete and he can have smaller jobs. So this code section um, defines what we have for our principal uses of an asphalt or concrete plan. Um, obviously, if this is approved, the conditional use permit will require him to follow these specific um, developmental uses. And then I've also have um, a list of other conditional uses that he needs to follow um, as terms of his conditional use permit. And those are actually very similar to the ones that were in the last application that he had. Um, the one addition I had is, we can, is the outdoor storage of equipment, storage of equipment and materials. Um, that's one is specific for the concrete and asphalt plant, um, which will change his um, site plan just a little bit. But as we know, the site plan is a concept plan. Um, and I have a little picture of that on the last slide. And I tried to orient it so it looks like it's the parcel. It's technically sideways, but you kind of get the, the gist. And um, Mr. Morissette is here to answer any questions. Okay, would the applicant like to come forward and uh, add any additional information? Okay, all right. Well, being the case, then I will open this to public comment. Uh, please come forward, state your name and address, and three minutes, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jamie Rowland. I live at 2112 Pine Oak Court in the Genito West subdivision. I'm also representing here tonight Mr. Al Patel, the owner of Dorset Market, which is uh, right next to the parcel that Mr. Morissette is applying for. Um, we've got several names on the petition here, which I will be emailing to uh, the Planning Commission that are not in support of this facility. Number one, Mr. Al, who has been a business owner in Powhatan County at that location since 2007, is worried about his water table. Um, to me, anything used in construction, you're going to need water there. Um, if, a war, if a well is drilled, that could severely hurt, especially Mr. Patel's business, which the water table in that area is not very well. I'm in Genito West. Many of y'all, if y'all go back to when that neighborhood was built, that neighborhood probably shouldn't because of all the well problems. I was one that had to deal with well problems. Um, so that is the most detrimental thing we are concerned about with this business. Number two, the entrance is right there in a curb just next to Dorset Road. Um, I'm assuming there is going to be several types of large trucks coming in and out of this facility. In the last 20 some years I've lived in Powhatan County, I have watched the traffic grow, not only on Dorset Road, but on Genito Road. Um, I'd like to remind y'all, Genito and Dorset Roads are not Virginia primary highways. They are secondary roads. Yes, trucks run up and down, but if you keep adding so many trucks to it, that road's gonna have to get in is gonna get into disrepair and my deals with VDOT and I deal with VDOT on the electrical basis and what I do for a living. Those roads usually get secondary look at opposed to like old Buckingham or Route 60. I am not opposed to new business in this county, but to me, a business like that should be on somewhere like a Route 60. Also, these trucks will be going back and forth. I must, I've been understanding going to Harper's Mill and Magnolia Green in Chesterfield County. Genito Road that splits headed east to there. That is also a state bicycle route. And I can tell you when you get in the spring and the summer, um, there's a lot of bicycles on there. And 
you can get some impatience through there. And that road to me is not designed for big trucks. Businesses like that need to be up on main highways. And that is a guy, agriculture area. And I represent a lot of several of my neighbors and friends. If you'd stand, that's not in support, that's uh, in support for this business not to be passed. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not against uh, new business, but it should uh, be in the proper place. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey, good evening. My name is Josh Matthews and I live at 996 Dorset Road. So I'm the neighbor that's directly beside this lot. I'm um, just looking real quick at the, the, the concept that you had in front. I saw that there's a five trucks, which are about 20 feet from my property line. So it looks like if this goes through from now on, when I get up in the morning and come out of my front door, I'm gonna see five monster trucks sitting beside my house. Um, questions I have uh, as this goes forward is, uh, has there been a traffic study or risk analysis done by putting a commercial entity in this place? The reason I ask is because I do live on that corner right there beside this facility, uh, potential facility. And in the last six months, we pulled three cars out of our, our front yard, you know, Powhatan State, um, Powhatan Sheriff's Office has pulled three cars out of my yard because it is a risk with the traffic, 55 mile an hour zone and people are playing on and off. Um, my second question would be um, restrictions being implemented. So you did have in your list the restrictions that may be uh, for his usage of the land. Uh, I'm very concerned when I see this is called a asphalt or concrete plant. Um, when I think of plants, I think of a major type of industrial uh, complex as opposed to just uh, extended parking for trucks. So definite restrictions need to be in place to ensure that it doesn't grow into some massive commercial entity in a, in a residential slash agricultural area. Uh, my third question and request is, has there been an environmental study done? Uh, as we have concrete plants and massive use of water, uh, because I am on a well and I live right beside that, what is that gonna do as there is water runoff and spillage and it goes into the ground and, you know, is that gonna taint my drinking water for my family as well as the residents that are around me? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else like to come forward and speak, please? Good evening, Harry Markland. I live on Hope Meadow Road. I'm here on behalf of my son who lives on uh, Dorset Road, just down the street from uh, where this proposed plant uh, is uh, scheduled to go. I, uh, I know a little bit about the, the uh, concrete business because a high school friend of mine owns a huge uh, concrete company up in Maryland. And the um, concern that my son has is with the noise that's gonna be created uh, for all of these neighbors, these folks right here and my son included. It's, fun, it's fine to say, uh, oh, well, he has this new modern equipment that uh, he's gonna just load the trucks up and they're gonna scurry off. But all of that material has to come from somewhere. It's not just the cement trucks that are gonna be going in and out. He's gonna to have to have gravel. He's gonna to have to have the cement uh, mix delivered. The, the number of vehicles that this is gonna require is gonna be astronomical. Um, it's fine, uh, you know, it's easy to talk about. We're, we're uh, in favor of business in Powhatan County and I am in favor of business in Powhatan County because we have to do something to level the, the tax rate that's being, uh, uh, burdensome to, to uh, the homeowners in Powhatan County. But we have a comprehensive plan that says we're going to have these kinds of businesses along this Route 60 Carter. And then we're talking about a plant on Dorset Road and Genito Road in a rural farming area where we have Genito West and, and uh, uh, the development that's all going to be impacted by um, this business that's that's proposed here. I, I plead with you to uh, not allow this. It's just not an appropriate location. We have Luxstone Quarry. We have a blacktop factory back there already, I believe. And uh, I see cement trucks going back uh, to the Luxstone Quarry area all the time. Maybe that's a better location for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. 
Um, my name is Chris Paulette. I reside at 925 Dorset Road, which is basically the intersection of Genito and Dorset. It, my property is right behind Graceland Baptist Church. And the main concern for me is on a weekly basis, I, I already witness a multitude of vehicles getting pulled out of my personal driveway. So the police officers use my personal driveway as an accident scene. Med flight is there at least twice a year due to the severity of the accidents where they land on our property and, and, and take the victims off. Um, but on a little personal, more personal note, I have a 12 year old son that has to stand right there at the end of my driveway at Genito in Dorset at the primary business hours that these trucks would be coming in and out of, out of the area. You know, he's at the bus stop at seven o'clock in the morning. I know in the construction business, that's prime time for trucks to be moving. Um, and with the accident rate already at a high, all time high right there at that in intersection and my driveway as well. Um, it's just not the right place for it. And we, it's too much traffic that is uncontrolled already. And when you add industrial trucks and, and, and commercial trucks of that nature, it's just that more of a hindrance to the on flow of traffic, whether it's they've got to slow down abruptly because it's a 55 mile an hour zone or, or um, just impedance of, of flow, you know? Um, I, there are several instances of, of trucks and cars not stopping for the school bus, and that's an ongoing battle. Um, I've actually had to pave the end of my driveway with a concrete landing due to the amount of accidents that have happened right there in my, my ditch line, if you will. And um, with that being said, it's just... I'm scared for my kid to, to get on the bus every morning and every afternoon with the, with the burden of, of not stopping or, or bigger trucks or, or what have you. The main concern for me is the flow of traffic and, and the abundance of vehicles that a business would, would have right there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to come forward and speak, please? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Richard Jenkins and I live at 907 Dorset. Before I could proceed any further, I, I, I would suggest that we get a hold of VDOT's plan. What's VDOT's plan to handle the increased absorption of vehicles? I, this is more like a skit on Saturday Night Live. And it's not funny. <laughs> uh, it's all I Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Please, oops. My name is Bradley Jenkins. Um, Richard Jenkins' wife. We live at 907 Dorset Road. And coming out of our driveway is taking our life in our hands every single day. And like Mr. Paulette said, at the end of our driveway, we have a concrete pad. And we put that there because literally we have to we have to screech out of our driveway because traffic around the corner of our of our property, you have it's it's like a five-way stop. We've got the church traffic, we've got Genito, we've got our driveway, it's in a curve, and even down further where you have the entrance into the new subdivision, um, Cedar Green, they have the same problem too. This whole curve is so dangerous and there are so many wrecks there all the time. And it, it scares me to death. And now we're gonna have more trucks that we have to worry about pulling out. It, it's, it's a terrible, terrible intersection there. Anyway, without having a situation with more trucks, more large trucks. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else?
Hi, I'm Heidi Williams. I live at 958 East Woodridge Court um, in the Genito West subdivision. Just wanted to throw in my comments about the traffic. Um, we are new to the neighborhood. We've lived here about a year. And in that year that we've been here, I've seen at least three accidents at that intersection of Dorset and um, Genito. The cars, they like they just said, they come around the curve. Um, I can't imagine having a large, slow moving vehicle pulling out in front of those cars that are flying around the curve and that don't know that there is going to be a large vehicle in front of them. Um, we moved here from Short Pump, trying to get away from traffic, trying to move to a more rural area. And it makes me sad to see a area that's zoned for rural being potentially moved to a non-rural area. So that's it, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Any, whoops. Oscar Davila, nine six three. Oscar Davila, nine six three. Which court? I think my main concern is the runoff. Um, we live, most of us, uh, Robert Taylor, myself. Our yards back up to a creek, which is already being eaten up by the expansion of Magnolia Green. But those creeks run into the Appomattox River. So what's going to be controlling this? And of course, um, echoing our wells. So I think we need to take a look at what we're doing further down the line, not just what starts here, where it's going to end up. At. And that's all I got. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Okay, seeing there's no one else present, is there anyone on Zoom or calls? Okay, then I will close the public comment period and open it for uh, planning commission discussion and questions. And Ms. Bolin, you have a statement? I do have a statement. This is my district, but I have to recuse myself from any discussion and voting on this matter. Thank you. So who wants to jump in first? Madam Chair, I'll, I'll jump in. Thank you, Ms. Pendergrass. Um, so this is not a light industrial use. This is a heavier industrial use. Maybe it's not the heaviest industrial use that we could find for this area, but it's a, he it's a heavier industrial use. And I really just don't think when I look at my comprehensive plan, I look at the intent under rural and I look at the intent under crossroads, either one of those, that this type of business complies with the intent of either one of those future land use areas on top of, um, and I do drive by all these properties because a lot of them I'm not familiar with. I've driven down this area twice and I don't see this, I, I don't see how this can safely handle the truckloads that have been you know, stated to us um, because as one of the gentlemen stated, that this is not just the cement trucks coming in and out. This is also the tractor trailers delivering the stone, delivering the other aggregates that this person needs for this business. I think it's a great business. I think the concept of the trucks is a great concept, but we have established growth peer, um, we have established growth areas in the county where this business would make more sense. So I, I just don't see supporting this, even with the conditions that we've put on it, um, with what this is going to do to that neighborhood and to the residents that are living there. Thank you. Mr. Hall. Well, I guess by being the elder statesman that's yes. lived in the county the longest, yes. uh, I remember back when this property was being used full-time for logging and there was tractor trailers, 18 wheelers, uh, 40 foot, 50, foot, I guess, 40 foot long trailers. Um, and that yard was full of tractors and trailers for carrying logs. Um, first, I was kind of surprised that it was A10, but I guess that, a10 that the logging was able to fall under that back in the day. 
Um, but that part of it, by knowing the history of what has been there in the past uh, and what's proposed now, it would be a big improvement if you look back how it was back in the day to what it'd be now. Um, I've done a lot of research on the trucks uh, that's being proposed. They are high tech. Um, the asphalt concrete plant designation that everybody sees, uh, I'd be concerned too just by that designation. Um, but we have to remember um, the restrictions and the conditions that are being placed on the site too, a uh, maximum of six trucks. Um, yes, there will be some deliveries that'll be made. Um, how many, is it one a week, a couple a week, two or three trucks for the gravel, for the sand and for the cement? Um, it just, based on the past history and the, the volume of traffic that has been used on that property compared to now. Uh, and there's, we've, Mr. Morset um, has told us in the past that there is no runoff um, um, due to how these trucks operate and the research says the same thing that they are, they leave the site and it's mixed per order. So if you need six yards or three yards, that's how much is made. And that's the beauty of these trucks. Um, so I'm, I'm leaning in favor of this. Uh, I think it would be an improvement. The site right now is run down to be quite honest. Uh, I think um, that uh, with the landscaping and the buffers that they will be putting into, it'd be a little bit of a help too to make the site a little bit better. So, and hopefully they'll address the buffer on, if you're looking, uh, I guess that'll be the Northwest side of the property um, where neighbors won't be able to, to see trucks parked lined up, let's say. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Um, I have some questions for the applicant, if you don't mind answering, is that possible? Thank you. I'm sorry, ma'am, we're out of the... Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, so here are my questions for you, if I may. Um, First off, regarding the water, the water that will go into these trucks, so the water come out of wells off this current Weaver, well, I know it was Weaver Timber con contracted this, this property. Will you be using those wells for the water? No, I'm talking about on the property that you're gonna be having your business. The water that you use for your, you can turn the mic up so you don't have to lean over so far. There you go. I think it should pick you up. There we um, go. There you go. Turn it on is a good thing. There we go. Um, so I'm asking what water will you be using for your trucks? Where will the water come from will you, to use for the trucks? Well, the water comes from right now uh, privately and we, we pump it, um, but we'll maintain and keep on doing that. But with plans to put uh, a well in through obviously the county and engineers, um, people, there's three parcels there uh, with uh, the availability to perk on three sites for wells. And uh, I understand people's concern about water. I mean, I live in the county. I graduated high school here. I, I still live here. My family lives here. And I don't want anyone taken from me. And I don't want to take away from anyone else. And uh, so that's why the county is involved when wells are installed. Um, engineers get involved. They dictate distances between wells um, to make sure that one well won't affect the other. And if that is the case, then a permit won't be issued and a new park site has to be made available. It's just the simple rules of how counties work whenever you go to put in for a well. Um, I've done it a few times. I'm building homes in Powhatan. Um, so the intent is to be able to 
have some water on site in a well in the future. Um, however, we do not intend to take anyone else's water or affect the water table in the area. Okay, this is a pretty green truck from my understanding. You will not be bringing back any leftover uh, manufactured concrete and dumping it on the property. Is that correct? You mixed exactly what you need to use. There's no need to rinse a truck out on the property or anything like that. Is that correct? Uh, no, ma'am. It would actually do damage to the truck to try to drive it back and then clean it there because the concrete would get hard. Uh, so we would actually clean out on site, which only takes a um, minimal amount of water and but that, little, little uh, waste, but it's not done on our at all. It's done on the job site after the, the truck is done mixing because the fresh concrete will get hard and has to be cleaned off there on the site where the mixing was taking place. And the approximate value of each of these trucks? And the approximate value is, I believe, four $400,000 each. $400,000 a truck, which, and how many trucks are you starting out initially with on the property? Two. Two. And the plan is to move to how many? Uh, the plan is to move to a, a six trucks maximum. Oh. Okay. So based on one truck, typical job, I know you, the jobs will vary. How many deliveries? What type of deliveries would you have to have coming each week for, say, just do it on one truck? So one truck going out every day, roughly what sort of deliveries would have to come into the property? Um, well, with one truck, I've got some numbers here for two trucks, but. Well, you can give it to me for two. That'll okay. work. So the current um, projection here with two trucks, um, we would be. Uh, doing 46 weeks of production, which is 13,800 yards of concrete a year, which if you do all of the math and equate, it means that each truck goes off the property 3.6 times a day and comes back on the property 3.69. That's the actual volumetric concrete truck. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so for each truck, we're just rounded up and say four trips per day yeah. per truck. Yes, ma'am. Okay, my question is the materials that you have to have on the property to go into the truck, mm -hmm. how, what are we looking at? How many deliveries per day to support two trucks? Deliveries are looking at for, and I can give you all total uh, volumetric trucks um, and then the trucks delivering the materials necessary to feed the to volumetric support trucks to support two volumetric trucks. We're looking at 9.69 trucks total, volumetric or otherwise, in and 9.69 out per day. Per day. Yes, ma'am. So 10 per, so basically with two trucks, you just told me each truck comes like four times a day. So it's 18 truck trips per day for two trucks. Yes, ma'am. Okay, got that. Understand that, let me write that down. I'm a quantitative person. Okay, so 18 truck trips per day for two trucks. 18.44. 18.44, okay. Right. If, you're, if you're a number person. Okay, I was doing it roughly. Okay, um, so I will make a point that your business is green. It's very responsible in the construction business. I love Powhatan County getting personal property taxes on $800,000 worth of just that. That, that entices me. Um, there ha was a traffic study done. It's in our packet that yes, I looked at. Yes, uh, it wasn't, it was done in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who to ask this, but I don't, of staff, do we know, has the traffic changed that much since this 2019 report in the area? It's a news one. Yeah, but I mean, I'm, there's we have there's nothing that's changed in the area that really should reflect. Um, I do wonder, so how, I, and I did not measure this in my car when I was driving around, that intersection of there, how far is that from the Chesterfield County line? Do we know roughly? Did I see it in the packet and miss it? it like oh, okay. Miles. What, how many miles? I thought it was a couple. 
is it less than? I know I saw it somewhere. Okay, while well, she's getting that information for me, I'm sorry to be asking on these questions. Uh, the trucks typically, I know the Magnolia Green Super Site is very close to there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, not making a comment about that. That's out of our jurisdiction, obviously. Uh, where do you predict the majority of your business will be occurring? Will it be occurring in Chesterfield County? Uh, we predict uh, the surrounding areas. Yes, ma'am. Chesterfield, Powhatan, Amelia. Um, however, the beauty of the trucks is the, the concrete's not mixed on the truck. The truck has segregated bends for gravel, sand, and powder, and water. And so the distance that we can travel allows people who have emergency situations where a barrel truck can't drive to because it's too far in remote, remote locations or hard to reach locations. And we're able to service those type of people as well. Okay. All right. So is it about a mile, Sarah, from the county line? I didn't measure it in my car. Man, I didn't do that when I was driving around. Okay, about a mile. All right. So the entrance to this property, is this the same that was used with the Weaver contracting firm? So it's the entrance that has been there. Okay, just wanted to understand that. Yes, I want to make the public understand you are aware of that. Yes, ma'am. That VDOT would have to do a site plan regarding the entrance. I've already been in contact to make sure that we're going to do what's expected. What and VDOT, what's yeah. already expected. I want to make sure that it's done. Well, so. you won't get a site plan if you don't do it. VDOT. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But that's kind of how it works. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let me ask my staff, environmental study, is there any need to do an environmental study since there isn't actually any manufacturing going on the property? Did I miss that in the packet? Uh, no, oh. That was an environmental study on the wetlands and the, the uh, surrounding lot areas on the property. Just We just doing our research to make sure that there was no issues. We weren't impacting anybody in the area. So has that been completed? I believe he has. But I don't so we have not seen that yet? Uh, it's Shannon Hill, um, but. Uh, have we not seen that yet? No, it was in the last week that this was performed, I believe. But yes. Okay. But again, this was an environmental to waste. This was like wetlands. Right, like exactly. Land. Runoff. I mean. Not runoff, you... but like the, the land. Well, what that's you... what I'm saying. That's what I wanted to ask, because I couldn't really see in the property. Is it paved in there already? Or are we talking about gravel? There's a bunch of gravel that's already been put in. And there's, a, I believe, a, it looks like there was an old set of scales maybe next to that block building. So big trucks that's, were going yeah. in there being weighed all the time. Right. Okay. I have two questions. Can I go? Yes, certainly. Go right ahead, I Mr. Hall. I didn't want to steal your thunder. Yeah, I have my list. You know me, the I'll, teacher I'll, and me. You. Make my list of questions. Support, my wife's a teacher, okay, so. support equipment on the site. What's going to be as far concern I also would have would be noise and stuff, backup, alarms and stuff on equipment. Uh, yeah. What equipment do you need to, to load these uh, trucks up? So the equipment that's necessary to load is a loading silo, which is a fancy word for the machine that puts the powder into the trucks without it going into the air, without mm -hmm. any issues. And so it starts up and has a gasoline engine, the same as you would hear on a motor vehicle going down the road. Um, the other uh, item piece of equipment would be a wheel loader, uh, and that is a bigger piece of equipment, kind of like you see like a caterpillar. It's got the larger wheels with the big buckets. We can pick up large quantities and be able to dump it into the truck. Now, when that vehicle backs up, it makes the beep noise. Uh, it'd be the six volumetric trucks, as we saw on the uh, site plan that we drew, and I believe... The 
We've got a trailer that will be parked in the back for our truck to be able to haul for the powder. And that doesn't make any noise. It's just a trailer. So that's really the extent of equipment well, the that makes noise. Well, the trucks making deliveries would likely have backup alarms on them as well. Correct. So we're looking at over 18, every time there's a trip, so 18 backup alarms a day with maybe some of the other loading equipment. Uh, for any time it backs up, yes. Okay, I'm just trying to. And I was trying to remember, how much water does each truck hold? Uh, approximately 500 gallons, I believe. 575. So that'd be a fair amount of draw on a well too, though. Uh, yeah, it, but what you have to understand and a lot of the general public doesn't is a well will only draw what a well will. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you hear somebody say, oh, you're getting 100 gallons a minute. Well, the well is only going to give you ever 100 gallons a minute. And so whenever you look at things like that, you say, well, how are you going to fill your, your truck up? And so we obviously are uh, investigating other motives and other ways to be able to get our, our water. Um, and the way that you can get it from a well that only produces the uh, gallons per minute is you can put a holding tank right. and you slowly yeah. put it in throughout the week where you don't affect anybody else and you fill it up and then you pump out of your west reservoir to be able to fill up the truck. Right. So that was going to be my next question. Yes, yeah, sir. that's that's Mr. Hall, very good. Because I know like people that have a uh, well and want to fill a swimming pool, you want to do it on a slow drip. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Do we so, have Madam, other... Madam Chair, can I just make a comment? Yes, ma'am. So, and uh, I, this is the pink elephant in the room, I'll just say it. Yeah. But if Mr. Good had a concrete plant, he would have been allowed more than one truck. And so, right, it was a home based business, right. But the scenarios are the same it's a residential area, it's the roads were not necessarily developed to hold the truck activity. There's safety concerns on both of them. So I really draw a close assemblance to this and the other business at the magnitude of the business, the location of the business. Um, and, and I'm not against either one of these businesses. Oh, I'm 100%. I just think we have got to consider where these businesses go and the impact these businesses have on the neighborhoods, the safety of the infrastructure, and that we comply with the comprehensive plan because when we, if, and I can read, I read pages, you know, for the rural and the crossroads, you know, I pulled this out and I read the yeah. intent. And if you read the intent on page yeah. 77 and you read the intent on page 69, neither one of these do I believe it implies that an industrial, a non-light industrial, because I don't think that this is light industrial, use goes in there. Yes, is it listed as a use? It is, but we are supposed to evaluate whether that use makes sense in each case. Right. And I just want I just want to say that. No, no, please do. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Hall? Yep, those are my last questions. Okay. We're good? We're ready? Good. Okay. It's very, very difficult situation because it is an excellent green business. And my number one concern is, oh yeah, you may sit down. You don't have to. It is a green business and I'm always concerned with the safety of the citizens. And I rode up and down and made the turn and trying to, to figure out the impact of the trucks. But as you said, Mr. Hall, trucks travel that, that area. And I was trying to, ascertain and you guys may not know this how long ago was that property used for timber with the larger trucks coming in and out do we have any clue how long ago it was when it's been a while. Mm -hmm. yeah so it was probably prior to those neighborhoods being built yes it was before Jennifer was <laughs>
Okay, well, it is a very, very difficult decision here tonight. Yes, Ms. Madam Hayden. Chair, are you looking for someone to make a motion? Yeah. <laughs> I would be happy to make a motion that in accordance with section 83-123F4 of the Powhatan County Zoning and Public or Zoning Ordinance and Public Necessity, Convenience, General Welfare and Good Zoning Practice, the Planning Commission recommends denial of the request submitted by Lee Morissette to permit a contractor, well, it says contractor storage yard, but it was the cement asphalt facility, I'll use those terms, Should on we? tax map 5335A, 5336, and 5332. Okay, we'll need- That was on page 46. I was reading that. Did I not read the right thing? Page 53 has it the other way. <laughs> oh, has it the other way? I'm sorry. Oh, I was looking at 46.2. I was on page 46. Okay, well, let's. I'm just, I just replaced the contractor storage. Right, with for the, asphalt or concrete. And I re recommended denial. Okay, do I have a second? Okay. I will second that. Okay, and we'll do a roll call vote. Who's gonna call the roll call? Do I usually? Aye. Uh, aye. Yes. I'll for denial. For denial. And I just wanted, I know typically we don't make a statement. This is a fabulous business. I did a lot of research. I want to find suitable property for you to do this business in Powhatan County because it is a wonderful asset to our county and it'll benefit us in the tax base. And there, there are locations and I really hope can, do we have someone within the county staff that could assist this applicant with finding an appropriate location for their business? Roxanne, I reckon that development. I think that director. would be, because I would really hate to lose your business from Powhatan County. We need you. We want business in Powhatan County. And I, I'll just be totally honest with the public and with you. I went, I wasn't sure which way I was gonna go tonight. And I saw search and looked hard. I read everything. I rode over there and rode over there. And to be honest, I go through that way all the time. I have a child that lives in Magnolia Green. So I'm very familiar with going through there frequently. So please know that you know, I really thought long and hard and it was a very difficult and painful decision to make. And please, please try to find an appropriate place for your business because we need you in Powhatan County. Thank you. But it will go to the Board of Supervisors, as you know. Okay, I think, and our third CUP is deferred. So we're gonna move on. If that's okay. We have some new business this evening. And is someone gonna preview that for us? Come on, Sierra. Not everybody feels that way. $200,000. I know, I just big mistake. Other people have to live next to it. Would you want to be next to it? It's already been used as a wood yard. Never, Would you want to live? Hey, guys. Mike's. All right. So this next item is a new item for a possible zoning text amendment. Um, it is for retail use in our Courthouse Square Center District. And what page are you on? Um, I'm sorry, that is page 82 um, and 83. So thank you. Yeah, so what prompted this was there is a business that is in obviously in the Courthouse Square District that is interested in um, expanding what they currently do. Um, they would like to have a retail use 
not necessarily customer facing, but definitely a retail type store, um, kind of covered over, poured over the zoning code, um, looking at this district. And it is um, a little odd that we don't have retail there at all. Um, I've quoted our, oops, let me pull up the exact part of our code. So I pulled up this part of our comprehensive plan that covers a courthouse special area. And in that, you know, obviously you guys are familiar with the with the comprehensive plan, but um, creating a vibrant mixed use village core, I think really could benefit from having retail use. Um, as you know, there's a lot of other industrial, um, excuse me, industrial, governmental um, and restaurant uses there. I think that retail would be a nice addition. It would also expand that area to have some more options for additional retail down the line. Um, but yeah, that is just, that's what prompted this and um, love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Yes, Ms. Pendergraf. Did, did you say not customer facing? Um, this particular one is not gonna be customer facing, but I think that we should expand it to be retail for customers as well. Retail not customer facing, can you give me an example? Um, so he's doing retail, um, like it's business to business. So oh, okay. he's gonna have, okay. yeah. Okay. Well, I, mean, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Um, he's doing retail business to business. Oh, this particular, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, okay. this particular okay. business that prompted Okay, this. I understand now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That wasn't clear to me. I was right. Slow. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should yeah, have specified. Fair. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I have one other. When, and when me. we think about this, like, how would restrictions fit into that so that we are not... Like, what would we be wrapping that in? So I think for this particular business, we could have a square footage limitation. Um, he's not looking at building something large. His lot that he's on right now is not that big. Um, so we're looking at, you know, just an additional building behind. Um, I would say for other retail uses, maybe we kind of look at some development standards of what we feel comfortable with. Um, open for suggestions on that, you know, Courthouse Square District is not very big, right. but it could be, you know, a, a destination place more for Powhatan than it already is. So I think that it would just be a nice, a nice addition. And I think my only comment would be that we would want to make sure that the scale of things of that would come in would fit with the existing scale yeah. and right. we wouldn't wind up with a we're not a target store. There. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so it would be very much scale to me. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the concept absolutely makes sense. It's, it's scale and making sure that it it fits the the aura yes. and the surrounding. Yes. And I think me. that that can be taken care of, of course, for this person that, you know, prompted this um, text amendment. Uh, they would have to obviously have a pattern book plan, yeah. site design, mm -hmm. all of those things. So things would have to be within the, the scale and design of, of that area anyway. Okay, any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? And we'll, I guess we uh, vote on this next month. Just nod your head that it's okay to put on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna ask. Excellent. Are we okay we going to the agenda next month? Absolutely. It's clear, no <laughs> questions. That's okay. We have another one. I guess you're gonna help us out on this one. Yes. So this, uh, is, this is the industrial uses and in CC Commerce yes. Center. And let me find what page that is in our. That is starting on page 88. Yeah, I'm talking about in our, um, the comprehensive plan. Oh, oh I'm sorry. So that's what I like to I look at in my book on my notes. <laughs> I don't have that. Oh, that's have. okay. I can sorry. look it up in the. <laughs> Sorry, Jane finds it probably faster than I can. I've always have post-it notes. I do too. Look at my post-it notes. I look like a ragamuffin with all these post-it notes in here. Which page? Uh, uh, for the, I don't know what the comprehensive plan actually. It's referencing. I didn't, I didn't put it in here. Business stuff, right? Is that what you're looking for? Well, I'm looking for the Commerce Center District permitted uses list that we have in the comp plan. Isn't that in there? Can we put that in there? No. Oh, no. That's, this, I pulled this from the zoning. But I thought that we had, never mind. Don't mind me. Okay. 
they had appropriate are you thinking of appropriate, appropriate yeah that's what i was uses. trying to find the yeah. i just wanted to read that again but i didn't no that's okay so what i what i did I've, just for this document that's up um i went i went ahead and i highlighted the um uses that are already in cc that can are can you like, blow it up a little oh, bigger because yes, i'm old and blind <laughs> I went and okay, highlighted that's cool. the uses that are already light and considered light industrial. They're the same uses in both mm -hmm. districts. Um, so you can see there's kind of a lot that's already there. Um, but I also have another document that I created that um, has my suggestions of what I think could be added. Sorry, let me pull that up. So there's just a couple, and I, and again, I, I you know I, I've talked with staff, and we kind of, you know, kind of made a conclusion of what we thought would be not a huge impact light industrial use, um, something that you know can be compatible with other commercial uses. Um, so um, a couple of them just right here: greenhouse nursery, floriculture, newspaper magazine publishing, uh, data center. I'll come back to that. Recreation facility tire sales, um, industrial research and development, commercial industrial services, metalworking, that's iffy, printing or other reproduction, woodworking, brewery, distillery, winery, or warehouse. So I wanna, I wanna kind of highlight why I made these suggestions. Um, and this one I'm sure is probably the, you know, giving up some red flags is data center. Oh yes, because Northern Virginia is having a heyday with those. Right, so we're not, we're probably not gonna be looking at, you know, some multi- Amazon. We're not looking at Amazon. We're, we're considering this more of a small scale data center. This of course is something that we can add developmental standards to, um, you know, limit our square footage, limit the impact, um, but it's something that is definitely going to be it's, I would say, is less of industrial use and more of a commercial use. The other one is recreation facility. We already have an indoor one, um, something like um, the Powhatan Ice Rink is actually in an industrial area, but it would be really nice if that had commercial uses around it. So I think that something like that could be useful in an outdoor space. Um, a, a related place is SCORE in Richmond, if you're familiar with that area. Oh yeah, and it's a really score. nice facility, yes. really popular. Um, so that could be something that could be used in commercial, I would think. Um, I included tire sales and mounting simply because we already have a lot of these automotive repair and servicing, automotive body and painting already in CC. They're already there just kind of seems like an, another incidental use to put there. Can I ask a question about yes, that please. one? I mean, to me, that's a, a size thing. If you mm -hmm. start to do that for major cement trucks, or sure. it's a size thing, too, sure. right? So um, that's, that's, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, these are, these are suggestions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we we'll, can take things in and out, whatever you see fit. Um, but I just, I included that just because we already had automotive uses. It could be, um, you know, just residential tire sales. I don't know if they really restrict that, but something like a discount tire, they typically only do, you know, um, residential residential vehicles, doesn't right. sound right, but you know, right. regular vehicles. Um, the other one, actually, I, I wasn't quite sure about this educational, scientific, or industrial research, but I talked with our um, economic development person and she informed me of kind of like the specifics of this. And this is a lot, smaller scale than what it sounds like. Um, this is more kind of like, and I wish I had off the top of my head a great example, but lab core is what I can think of. Okay. But maybe not even something that big. Something that does, you know, smaller scale laboratory work. Um, metal working, welding and pipe fitting. So this is another one that I think could be used. We could use some developmental standards um, in addition to woodworking. Woodworking, we're thinking more of like a, you know, a cabinet maker, someone that does furniture, more small scale woodworking. Would it necessarily need a large industrial site? They could use a commercial space. The other one I put in here was printing. Um, I think that that can be applied to products, um, printing products, printing like t-shirts kind of thing. Um, Again, so graphic um, design, graphic design, but also like screen printing. I'm going to use another Richmond example, but there was a um, a little printing press in Carytown. They had a they had a building in Carytown, 
and that's where they did all of their printing and they did a lot of did a lot of business. So um, I think something like on that scale would be appropriate. The other one, um, we, again, I talked to with our economic development person and um, we were discussing Brew Rouge Distillery. This is one of those things that's, it's already, we already allow a microbrewery, micro distillery in CC. Developmental standards are kind of, kind of seem a little arbitrary. Um, it limits the uh, gallons of beer and it's a lot. So, you know, kind of having something more specific or I'm sorry, more general brewery distillery, I think again, would be appropriate. Um, winery, this would be a business that um, produces wine bottles, obviously not a, 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 a vineyard, yeah, not a vineyard, not, yes. And then um, a warehouse, again, definitely gonna have to be appropriate for the size. We're not looking at an Amazon, we're not looking at Microsoft, you know, we're looking at something that's a lot smaller. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, are we in agreement that we'd like to see this on the agenda for next month? I'm fine with that. And mm -hmm. I, I like your explanations and what you've proposed. And I did the same yeah. thing. I went and compared the two yeah. and it wasn't <laughs> overwhelmingly no. different. Well, I wish, yes, I, I'm totally fine. Mm -hmm. Thank nice you one. for your work. Absolutely. That was a good job. Appreciate it. Okay, we do not have a workshop this evening, so I will adjoin the Planning Commission. Our next Red Room meeting will be Tuesday, March 7th, 2023 at 6 p.m. Thank you.